Hi guys, welcome. Today we have a special tier list for the race and class. We have been having quite a bit of questions to see what is the best builds in the game. And I've been asked to make a tier list on the class and the race. And here it is, guys. This ranking on the builds is based on the consistency and flexibility and the potential and strength for each of the builds and classes. I'll be focusing on the guides for the warriors mages to come in the future but now let's focus on the tier list for holistic summary for those that are wondering how did this tier list come to be with those numbers i'll walk you guys through so let me balance it here this is made on excel i can share the excel with you guys as well for those who are interested so with consistency usually i rank them from 1 to 10 usually most builds will be on top of consistency about seven for most builds and for a great build you usually go to eight to eight point five for me so basically it's going from five to ten if you guys think about that way for the potential strength consistency comes about how likely you can build this build and how flexible you can adjust for other builds for example warriors can adjust for assassins by going into six warriors adjust for goblins by going to six warriors with enigma and elementals with tiny adjust for majors with nagas with slaughter and then as a, and, and then as a naga that's why warriors pretty high on consistency and flexibility warriors do fare quite well against other builds most knights most goblins are physical attack dealers then the warriors armor is quite consistent they face most matchups with quite less loss compared to others with potential what does this mean Potential looks how strong you in the late game. We can see how strong beast warriors. We can see how strong elite warriors in the late game. So we have quite a bit of potential, and I do favor potential and strength in the mid to late game. So this is why the weighting for both this one weighting on on the consistency and one point two weighting on the potential and strength. Let's get into the tier list. On the top of my tier list, it's warriors. This could be three, six, and nine warriors, but nine is a very rare case. Some of the great warriors we can see are the Chores, the Beasts and Warlocks, Hunters and Warriors, and lastly, Ox and Mages as Warriors. You can see how many branch warriors can go into, and some of those warriors do have a less consistency because it is harder to find the Troll Warlock, maybe it's hard to find your Laundred. Sometimes it's easier because warrior can pair up with Hunters, with a variety of Hunters and three Warriors, and lastly with the Mages. Those potential ranking and strength are just an indicator, the keys to find the two star units early enough to branch into one of those. Knowing there are three or four choices with warriors, we can comfortably go into warriors with a with a option to go into different builds. Say if we got Lycan and Task early, we can go into beasts and warlocks. We got three or two trolls early, we'll consider the trolls. We got Joranger, Naga, Say Medusa and Starter early, we can consider the hunters. And lastly, if you want to try the mages, Crystal Maiden, Razor are your two goal units, follow up with Keeper of the Light, maybe a Gyrocopter. Next rank on the top of my tier list for the builds and the mages. This could be three mages and six mages. We can have the gods with mages, which have less consistency or flexibility, but higher in terms of strength. We have the four humans with the mages, which human and warriors, by the way, Lycan and Conquer can add onto another warrior to have three warriors with the mages. The four humans are quite relevant in the late game with the superb human silence. And they're quite easy to be found and they're quite flexible because you can adjust for the humans, Lycans and Laundred as well into the beast summoner mage. They're quite strong in the late game because most mages do have crystal maiden and allow them to cast earlier. You can adjust for a slider, maybe with a Dusa to have Nagas on his team as well. Mages and Elementals. The good old classic Razor, Morphling, Piney, and Enigma. Usually you don't need all four Elementals because most cases you'll be facing range attackers like Troll Warlord, Hunters in the late game. So two Elementals are definitely enough. Elementals are the solid Mage backcore, but of course, you can also go into the six Mages. Six mages can go with the legendaries, which can be Enigma, Techies, Gyrocopter, you name it. Some of the great burst damage and really make use of the Crystal Maiden. You can see that the mages are ranked pretty highly. And if you're wondering if I can sort those out, yes. The next picture I'll show you guys, I'll have a sorted out tier list after this one. 
here I want to summarize the different builds first. So next off my list, goblins and hunters are actually on par. So I didn't want to say which one's higher, but I wrote the goblins first. So you can see that hunters in terms of summary is actually slightly higher than goblins. This is because goblins are less consistent. So many games were played that we don't find techies, which goblins are consistent in getting us to top five, but sometimes, you know, we just want to push further, want to find techies and become stronger. That's why it's so dependent on one unit, it loses consistency and flexibility. The strength is quite high though. You can have Goblin Nagas, Goblin Warlock, Assassins and Mages. Let's look at Goblins for now. Goblins can go into Assassins from round 10 to round 25 I feel. After that, Assassins, as three Assassins really do fall off if you don't find the three star Assassins. That's why they're flexible, but they're not very strong in the late game. Goblin Mages, on the other hand, is even more flexible and even stronger because Mages have Crystal Maiden. You can add Stunners like Conquer, you can add Medusa, you can power up your Goblins and have them cast so much faster. So the recommend build for Goblins is actually Goblin Mages in the transition game around round 15 to round 26. Goblins and Demons are very unique and very strong if you can find a 2-star Terror Blade very early. Goblins are quite tanky and quite bulky. With the Merc region, Goblins can last a little longer with Goblin buff as well. And if you happen to have the Goblin buff on the Terror Blade, that's a 2-star, you just watch that Terror Blade kills everyone with Rampage. The downside for the Demons is that it's really clutch to find your Anti-Mage, clutch to find your Terror Blade. And then after round 30, Terror Blade has the 2-star unit do fall off. So that's the part that's a little inflexible. And also you have to let go of them unless they're 3-star once you find your Goblin Techies. Hunters are one of my favorite builds. We have a particular guy for the Hunters and they're on par with the Goblins for me or slightly higher because they're more consistent. You may be wondering why this Hunter consistent at 8.5 because you can go into Elf Hunters, you can go into 6 Hunters, you can go into 3 Hunters with a variety of units. 2 Star Laundry, let's take it. 2 Star Conquer, why not? 2 Star Doom, yeah, let's take the front line. Maybe a 3 Star or 2 Star Tiny, maybe an Elemental Hunter, let's do that as well. So Hunters are quite flexible. But why is Hunter lower on my tier list? This is because the strength is lowered. Previously, it's higher because it's not dominated by Warriors and Mages. Now with the domination of Warriors and Mages, Hunters have trouble killing 6 Warriors, especially 6 Beast Warriors, because they are physical attack dealers. And also, Hunter have trouble against Mages because AoE damage really punishes Hunter with a low HP pool. And because of that, Hunter is not the strongest in the late game. But like, of course, we have seen great Hunters with great controls of 2-star Medusa, Tide Hunter, with Conquer. So the key for Hunters is in the control and the ability to build up economy in the mid and early game. Hunters and Elves. You usually want 6 Elves and 3 Hunters. The Elves are the front line for the Hunters. The plus side is the Evasion. Units do not gain mana if they hit you and they miss. The downside is you are quite squishy unless you find your 3 star Elves. Hunters, 6 Hunters with Frontline. Usually I prefer a 3 star unit solid as a 3 star tiny. Or what I do is I try to have a few of the purple units as a Frontline. 2 star Laundry is at least needs to be the Frontline. Maybe a 2 star Conquer, 2 star Doom or something that's tankier. The next one on the tier list is actually Knights. You may be wondering why is Knights higher than Assassins? Because Knights just recently got a buff. And Knights had a buff from 35% proccing at 6 Knights for all allies into 40%. And that actually buffed the Knights by 13% proc rate. Because 5% in proportion to 35% is actually 13% and that is quite relevant. Knights are great against mages as well, because everyone can get above, everyone can defend against the mages. The choices for knights is actually quite low for me. You might be wondering, hey, why do you have 7 instant as low as goblins? Because the downside of knights is they're so fixed, you have to have 3 knights, or usually 6 knights. That take up so much space, there's less units you can put in. But saying that, the knights are, can be quite strong because you can find your 2 star knights and 3 star knights quicker compared to other builds because most people won't be playing knights in that particular case. The choice of knights can be dragons with knights, chores with knights, or you can go knights, undead and legendary. This works wonderfully if you can find your 3 star knights fast. 
can be a Luna, could be a Chaos Knight, or even multiple techies, as you have seen one of the uploaded videos with double techies and knights. Assassins. Assassins can be three or six assassins. I did list quite of the possibility with assassins. You can go elf six, and you can go three assassins and six elves. You can go six assassins and three elves. You go elemental assassins and even dazzle assassins. The downside with assassins, as we have seen in a few games ourselves as well, is that they seem to be punished so heavily by the mages who bulk up in the corner and by the warriors with armor. Notice here the units or the builds down here are usually punished by the top builds. That's why the top builds for the current meta feel. So assassins are countered by warriors and mages who become mature, while hunters are also countered by warriors. Knights are also counted by warriors because knights deal most physical damage and most warriors are very tanky. We have the elves, six elves lastly. Notice we talked about elves in the other lineups, assassins and hunters. So the last thing with elves is elves and beast. Now why would you take elves and beast compared to beast and warriors? It's that because you have a dungeon early enough for you to fuse your three statues. Elves and beasts are no stronger than warriors and beasts because warriors and beasts goes into warlocks quite easily. You can have Witch Doctor, Necromancer, Phenomancer, and you can have Shadow Thing and Death. You can have Death Prophet and <laughs> Necrofo. Yes, I'm listing the warlocks. You can notice that elves really need six elves, and because of that, you are actually out of spots with elves and beasts and try to add warlocks. Elves really do need three star elves, and sometimes you have to top roll your crucial jewels at the start of the game to make it work. But once you do, the power and the potential is still very high over here. Lastly, you might be wondering, hey, why is Naga here? Why is on ten with unknown with potential? So Naga is a great utility pickup. There's only three Nagas in the game. We only need two. Warrior being one of the top meta builds, half slaughter as an inbuilt Naga. Most other builds do not take starter. This is why warrior have more options with Nagas to counter mages and other classes that deals magic damage. Nagas are flexible because they can fit in any lineup, and you can have a spot for them if you're facing mages or facing a bursty lineup. Usually, most classes have Medusa and Tide as the two Naga, but warrior have more choices. Warrior can go with starter and Tide, or starter with Medusa. Of course, you can take out the starter and go with Tide and Medusa for the warriors as well. The strength of Nag is unknown because if you tide cast, if you do so cast, it's over the ceiling. But if they do not cast, they become just a passive defender against mages. We do have the total as unknown as well because the crucial thing is to highlight we can have mana items on the Medusa and tanky items on the tide. Tide cast spells by receiving damage, while Medusa wants to cast spells by normal attack. Those are very different, so we definitely don't mix those. Usually for the mana items, we want to keep in mind the voice stone does not stack, so does the crown. The voice stone does stack with perseverance and the crown together. So items do not stack on itself, but they do stack with different mana region items. Here are the explanations for each of the builds on Reddit if you have to look at it, but I have explained more thoroughly on the recording. Over here, we have a sorted tier list by the totals. We do see Naga is a little troll here because I did purposely not give a value for the Naga, just as a highlight. I did not say let's build Nagas everywhere, but rather use it with caution, because they have great stunners in the late game, they also counter mages and other lineups that deals AoE damage. Warriors is by far the highest we can see over here with my ranking, followed by the mages with four humans and warriors with trolls. The trolls are so much stronger because of Dazzle. Having Dazzle means you have five trolls and so much easier to pick up compared to other builds, in comparison that is. Mages are still quite strong over here. We can see the Goblin Mages quite strong, followed by the Mages Gods, which Mages are legendaries. Beast Warriors are pretty high, Mage Elementals, and Warriors and Hunters. Notice that Hunters are still quite fair with Warriors. This is why Warriors are so strong. We have the Hunters over here. We have the Goblins. We have the Elves. Lastly, we have the Knights below here, not because the Knights are weak, but rather I want to highlight the Knights are a little fixed because they're, in, they're not, sorry, I want to highlight here because the Knights are very rigid. You need three Knights or you need six Knights. Not saying they're not great, but rather it's so hard to make the Knights work. Over here we can see the Knights with Dragons 
and I want to show you the Knights with Chores. Notice the Knights with Chores are much higher than Knights with Dragons because there's only three dragons where there's five chores. And with Dazzle, Knights can come back quite nicely with the late game spikes of three star units. To summarize this particular tier list, the highlight is to not always force for the warriors, the mages, or the hunters. The highlight is to prepare you guys for the guys to come and also to open up different avenues. You can play warriors with four different styles. Let's go back here. You can see the place that are the branch option for the warriors. You can see the option for the mages and goblins. This allows you to better curve into different builds when RNG give you different units. We don't have to see builds down in the bottom of the tier list to be not strong. I have seen players win with assassins, knights, elves, and hunters because those can be a niche pickup when most people do tend to pick the more popular builds. The key is to know what is available and what is your strength and weakness in the different stage of the game. Those will be the next game guide to come and I'll be touching on warriors, mages, and each of those builds on a focus guide for you guys. Thank you so much guys for watching. Please let me know in the comments of what do you think this particular tier list for the races and synergies. Please subscribe and please like for the YouTube. Please follow and please use your Twitch Primes on Twitch to support me on Twitch. Thank you so much guys for all your support so far. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to see you guys again on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.